What's up guys, I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. A place where we ask the hard hitting questions like what does a cow smell like when it's on fire? answer your question it smells like a big pile of wet burning hair Ugh! and that's right guys I'm gonna put my nostrils through that for you today and today I will be engraving and cutting leather with my Xtool D1 10 watt laser the software I'll be using is Xtool's proprietary software LaserBox basic this whole process is a pretty easy process to go through, so I don't really see the need to use like something like Lightburn when you can just jump in to their software and get it done quickly. Let's laser some leather. All right, so I have a bunch of leather scraps here that were provided to me by the one and only Ethan Carter over Ethan Carter Designs. Leather master extraordinaire. Go check out his channel, I'll link it below. And as I was doing some preliminary test burns, I discovered something that kind of sucks. All leather is not created equal. So my first experiment, I did this guy right here. Let's see if we can focus, there we go. And it turned out pretty good. Uh, a little rougher on the edges, but other than that, looks great, right? Those are the settings in LaserBox for leather. Then I went to this leather and using the same exact settings, I got this going on. Like it's just started burning it. See how it's folded over, it's all gross. Let me see if I can focus, not that you can really see too much there. This is like at half power, still gross. So I did as one does when they have weird results like this and don't know the answer. I asked the internet. And the internet responded in the form of Steve Knox of Knox box designs. And basically what he said is that all leathers are different kinds of densities. And since it's an organic material, it's really hard to kind of pin down. He literally said that leather from the same cow from one part of the cow to the other will burn and cut completely different. So Steve, thank you for the knowledge bomb. What this means is you're gonna have to do a test grid first. Now, you should always be doing a test grid anytime you introduce a new material and then recording your results. However, according to Steve, we're gonna have to do a test grid for each kind of leather. So let's say you're gonna make a bunch of patches for hats. Make sure when you buy the material that you buy enough extra to be able to do a test grid first and then still have enough to make whatever you're gonna make. Anytime you're doing any sort of material, you should be using a test grid to determine the best results for your machine. Any machine settings that are recommended to you may work, but they may need to be tweaked out a little bit. So you always wanna do a test grid. Now, you can make a test grid in LaserBox Basic yourself. And if there's enough interest in that, if you wanna let me know in the comments down below, I can make a video on that. But some of our homies over on the Facebook page dedicated to the Xtool D1, I will link that down below as well, have already made a bunch of test files for you. I would suggest following that link and going to the file section, you'll see all sorts of stuff. Good, I'm gonna burn today. I will also link the, to my Google Drive down below. Okay, while I'm getting this set up, let's just go over a couple of safety tips when you're working with leather. Keep in mind that leather is an organic material, so it, it doesn't always behave the same way. Uh, so you should never leave your laser alone. But when you're doing a new material or an organic material, you should keep an extra special eye on that. Because a couple of things about leather, one, organic material, two, a lot of times it can, it can start to curl up on the edges. And if it does that, your laser head or your drag chain or something may catch a hold of it and totally move your project. I actually had this happen the first time I was working with leather on this machine. Um, I was cutting out a build dead build patch. It looks perfect. And, but as it was doing the cut, it had curled up a little bit on the edge. The drag chain caught it and moved it. And that cut cut right through the middle of the design. Ruined the whole thing. It happens to all of us, but just keep in mind to babysit yo shit. Thought I threw it away, but I didn't, see? Like, see how it started to cut and then it got like a double cut in there and never finished the cut? I thought it went through the middle of it, but it went through the side right here, if you can see that. In to LaserBox Basic, it is right here. 
And what I want to do first is I want to select the whole thing. And this thing's enormous. I have a small piece of leather I'm going to do this on. I want to grab this whole thing, make sure that this is clicked. And then I want to look at the height versus width. I have about 55 centimeters to deal with. So I'm going to go 50 and make that kind of small. I'm going to command plus to push in. And these, each one of these dots, if you look over at the right side of the screen, like when I click on this, it is 100% power, 90%, well, 90 speed, 90 millimeter speed. Uh, and if I click on this guy, oh, here, let me get out of here. If I click on that guy, this is 10% power, 10 millimeters per second. But it's gonna burn that and everything in between. We are gonna take this into, gonna hit our play button. Quickly focus my laser with the kickstand here. And then I'm also going to place it in its starting point right about there. And okay, now we're here. I'm gonna run a quick frame. Bring it down a little bit. One more frame. Framing is fundamental, kids. Okay, it looks like my estimated time is about 45 minutes. I'm going to click start. Just one more quick tip. Uh, this does really smell wretched. So I'm opening the garage door back there and I have an exhaust fan blowing out, but it smells horrible. <laughs> Just warning you. Okay, so these results are kinda small. I don't know if I can, there you go. So let me show you what they look like a little bit bigger. This is a different test piece I did. And if I can get them to focus, there we go. You can see the shading in there. Looks like we're gonna go about 40% power, about 70 millimeters per second. Let's jump back in the light burn. I have pulled my image in. I'm going to set my settings, which I said 40% power and 70 millimeters per second. Okay, but I also wanna cut this out because I wanna make this a patch, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the outline feature. Well, I'm gonna click this, I'm gonna click the outline feature. It is gonna give me an outline around there. I'm gonna grab that outline real quick. I'm gonna pull it over here. I'm gonna grab this outline, sorry. I'm trying to figure out how it says this outline is less, smaller than the image. What's up guys, Nick from the future here. Um, I didn't know what the issue was uh, when I was working on this, but I've discovered since then what it was. So I figured I'd jump in here because I've had a couple questions on this as well. If you'll notice, when I select the Hulk fist, there's a white box around it. That white box, that negative space, the, the program is taking that into consideration as well. So when I'm doing, when I'm trying to get it to be 50 millimeters or whatever tall, it's making the box 50 millimeters, not the image. So make sure if you've got that white space around there to take that into consideration when you're trying to come up with your measurements. Because I have had some people say that they've made something and they think it's supposed to be twice the size and it's tiny. And a lot of times it's because you get that white space around it and it's, and it's, <clears throat> it's measuring from the top to the bottom of the box, not the top to the bottom of the image. All right, back to past Nick. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a cut. I'm gonna use their default settings for, le uh, for leather, for cutting, except what I do is I do this two passes because I'll be running air assist and so I'm not really worried about scorching the edges. And then, I don't want to do it yet. I'm gonna grab this guy, bring this back over here. This will snap in the middle. Here in a second. Why does it say, I'm really confused on my sizes right now, guys. So we're back in here. It's, it's still giving me weird uh, measurements. So we're gonna run the frame on it and see if the frame looks right. Because everything else looks right to me. Snap it to place right in there, connect to our laser. We're already focused, so I'm just gonna pull this in place. Run a frame here. Hit that frame button. Right. That looks like the size we want, so we're gonna go ahead and hit start. Alright guys, and while the D1 is doing its thing, I just wanted to say thanks for sticking around to this part in the video. If you like these videos, hit that like button. If you have not subscribed, please 
hit the subscribe button. I'm getting a lot of new traffic and I'm not getting a lot of subscribers. Maybe I suck, maybe you're forgetting. And to the people who don't think I suck, I'd just like to say thanks to all my patrons. These guys are the ones that keep the lights on the shop. If you want to help out the channel, Patreon is a great place to do it. I will link it down below. Speaking of Patreon, we have three new patrons that just joined up. We have Katrina Kinney and Elena Madden at the single barrel level. We have Pat Sloan at the cask strength level. Welcome, new folks. Welcome, welcome. I would, I would clink you, but I have as a sealant for, for leather, and I don't think you're supposed to drink that. And as always, the highest of fives. I request the highest of fives. Goes to my top tier patrons or my Boilermaker patrons. Steven Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Andy the Viking, Dwight Smith, Christopher Walters, Todd Stewart, and Franklin the Tanklin. I'm still just holding the leather conditioner. So I highly encourage you to head on over to my Patreon channel Check it out, join up if that's your thing. If that is not your thing, make sure to check out the new merch store. Uh, I'll link that down below. We have such, such gems as this social distancing shirt. Free hugs, just kidding, it don't touch me. And then a little Bill Dead Bill logo on the back. All right, to the results. Okay, and there we have it. You can see it's still got its char on it. I'd love to keep it this dark, but it's just gonna rub off. So homeboy Ethan Carter himself gave me a solution to this. You just take painter's tape and you come in here and you're gonna take the excess char off with that. Just like that. You'll also maybe, maybe not notice a line running down here. That line is running through the leather. So that isn't even something that, that the laser did. As far as sealing this, I'm gonna be using this stuff. It's Resoline by Feebings. I've, told, I've been told that it works well, but if you don't cut it with water, it looks kind of plasticky. So we're gonna use just such a little amount of this that I'm just gonna eyeball how much water I'm gonna put in here. We are going to just apply this. I know it's gonna darken it up. I just don't know what it's like, how it's gonna end up. So I'm just gonna brush that on. All right, and then let, let that dry. And before we get to the results, just remember, I am not a leather expert by any means. This is probably my second time working with leather with a laser, and I'm sure there's people out there that know a lot more about this than I do. Okay, so those have all had time to dry. And by all of those, I did do several. I just took you through the process on one. So we'll start off with the one you've already seen, which was the Build Dad Build one. Let me give it a coat of Resoline. So here it is. It's pretty dark, but it looks a little better in person than it does. See, you can, there we go. That looks better. Okay, we'll go darkest to lightest, I guess. So here is our, our Hulk fist. And that doesn't look too bad. Um, it's a little muted. It could just be the leather, my understanding. All right, and next, Hail Hydra. Um, this doesn't look too bad. It's a little muddled. I, th I think I didn't get enough of the char off and it kind of mixed with the resoline a little bit. Before we get to the final two, what I've noticed is the lighter the leather, the better it looks, I think. So here is, here's the leather that, where's that piece? This is that leather that was burning at a higher temperature, so we lowered the temperature, sped it up a little bit, and we did get a little burning on the edge, but check that out. Look how clean that looks, man. Whew. Smells like leather. And then this last piece was just a little piece that I had sticking around, and it did kind of jog over, like that D and the C aren't supposed to be um, wonky like that. It did kind of move a little bit in the laser bed. That's 100% my fault but that turned out pretty well and in this case this is a little bit lighter the resoline actually made it darker so you let me know which ones were your favorite down below i hope that gives you an idea of how to work with leather until next time thanks for playing and now i gotta get to work